<coughs> Let's get started. Um, first off, um, introductions. We have the uh, this is the subcommittee meeting of the uh, payment to the town of Reading. Uh, the members of this subcommittee, just to reiterate, is uh, basically two commissioners, which is Mr. Stembeck and myself, two members of the CAB, Mr. Hooper and Mr. Cohen, and one member of the Board of Selectmen, which is Dan Enzinger here. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do tonight is restrict um, the conversation to really the, the, um, the members. Um, I do have some people here for technical. Colleen O'Brien is here for technical. Wendy Markowitz in the back is for technical. And Chris Pollard uh, is for technical purposes only in terms of anything that, in case technical questions come up and we need to have, there needs to be answers. <coughs> so um, one of the things I do want to mention is uh, this is kind of the chart on the storm response. And you can see that really in the um, first four hours there was a lot and then it just kind of went down and down and down. About 2,000 actually. About 2,000, so. Customers out of um, The department's response was, was very good and yes. the department to be complicated. Uh, com com yeah, complicated. Yes, Complimented. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's coming. That's coming. Right. Okay. Um, just one thing I do want to mention is um, we did share with the Board of Selectmen a white paper that um, you have copies of that's been given to the Board of Selectmen on that. And our, this is, uh, we've had our, since our last subcommittee meeting, we've actually had a board meeting. We discussed the issue and agreed to kind of come back to the table at this point. So one of the things I'm going to ask to do, there's a presentation. I'm going to ask Colleen to make, the, since it's, some of this is technical, to make parts of the presentation. Then at some point, I'll, we get toward the end, I have some proposal that will be up on the board. So Colleen, you want right, to go ahead? Can, can you hear her okay in the back? Uh, vaguely. Vaguely. You, you need to. Can we just move the mic over? Uh, that would be just because it's a wired mic. Okay. It's a wired mic. No, you got to move over. Okay. Yeah, I think we can move this table. Well, it's, yeah. Okay. Very good. Where are you going to sit, Colin? You're going to sit here, right? Leave it to you, Wendy, to tell me that you can see it or not see it. All right, mm -hmm. Either thumbs up or down. Okay, so I'm going to go through these quickly, just touching on, uh, you know, for the folks out there uh, in TV land, uh, along with anyone else that wants to understand the basis of, of some of the history on this. Okay, so as I said, we, uh, we're regulated uh, by the Department of Public Utilities as oversight. Our rates are governed by Mass General Law 164, uh, Chapter 58, and we must be cost-based. We can earn up to a maximum of 8% of net plant. And I make that clear because there are other utilities that can make different. That's under DPU 85121. There's special legislation from 1990 that authorized the RMLD to move from below the line to above the line voluntary pilot payments to all four towns at 2% of net plant. Above the line pilot payments are an expense obligation as a cost of production. So generally out there, most people play pilot and it's below the line, it's voluntary. Only Reading has special legislation to have moved that pilot from below the line to above the line as an expense obligation.
The same legislation uh, did not preclude voluntary below the line pilots from being made from unappropriated earned surplus. The DPU and the SGC state that the mass uh, municipal light plants are not tax collecting devices and they have no ob legal obligation to make payments of in lieu of taxes. The 20 year agreement benefits. The RMLD is a municipal light plant with multi town service territory. We have an ability to capture potential economies of scale through bulk power purchases. We leverage a single operation through <coughs> services reach across multiple towns. We're able to load shape through the blending of customer classes across the service territory for cost savings, meaning more usage over a longer period of time from commercial and industrial areas blended over residential usage. For example, if one of our service territory towns has a lot of commercial, when we blend that together with towns that are more residential, there's a cost savings for everyone. So there's definitely a benefit that comes with that. The RMLD financials and operations. We're a financially secure and conservative organization. Our utility financial standards are supported by the auditor. As supported by the auditor, the RMLD should have approximately operating cash of two to three months of operating expenses. The RMLD pays its accounts payable at approximately seven to ten million dollars per month out of our operating fund, like our checkbook. A combination of the operating fund, the rate stabilization <coughs> fund, and the reserve fuel fund is what we put together to meet the auditor's recommendation of the two to three months worth of operating cash. This would help to support some major, major catastrophic events such as the loss of some of our largest customers, a number of major system infrastructure failures with the absolute exception of the loss of a main substation which would probably run us about ten to fifteen thousand dollars a week for at least a year or two until we were to get something built. Uh, we would have to bring in mobile transformers and whatnot. Capital infrastructure is funded by the annual 3% depreciation expense regulated by the DPU in addition to a transfer of operating funds to the construction fund. Long-term strategic system planning forms the basis for short, medium, and long-term capital outlay. Revenue decline. Sales have been flat and are projected to continue to decline at a rate of approximately 1% per year. Decline can be attributed to the installation of energy efficiency measures by customers, predominantly commercial, as the greatest impact. A 2.5 megawatt natural gas fired peaking unit and a soon to be 5 megawatt battery storage unit will help mitigate costs associated with peak energy pricing. New revenue seeking programs such as electrical vehicle charging stations, stations etc., have been promoted, but penetration has been slow by the consumer. Heat pump conversions and other avenues are also being evaluated. The service territory is considered fairly saturated with only several viable pockets within each service town for economic development. Here is a uh, chart of the 2008-2017 kilowatt hour sales. The capital outlay. In 2013, the RMLD assessed its system and found significant deficiencies in maintenance inf infrastructure. A formal reliability study was performed by Booth and Associates. The study called for a GIS or a geographical information system, infrastructure collection, an outage management system, a work order, and asset management system, of which we have none. We just finished the GIS collection. The GIS data collected unveiled failure rates of assets at a magnitude beyond the original projection, increasing the capital outlay. Based on a preliminary study by economist at Jacobs um, uh, INC, and based on GIS data, including age and condition, and for the size of the RMLD service territory, the RMLD should utilize $8 million in capital investment per year, every year. The RMLD and its strategic planning increased its rate of return from approximately 5 to 7.75, not quite 8, of net plant for a short term to increase the, construction, the operating cash for transfer into the construction fund to avoid bonding and to target the six-year capital outlay plan. This is just a snapshot of, of how you come up with the $8 million based on your average useful life of assets. Um, this next slide is the 2% of net plant above the line pilot payments to all four towns. It's a little <coughs> hard to read, but essentially it goes from 2013 to 2017, where, for example, down the bottom in 2017, let me read that down here. Oh, you can't see my mouse. I'll do that, can you? 
All right, down the bottom in the green. So, for example, the net plant is 72977 Two percent is that of 1.49 million. And so when that gets distributed amongst each of the um, uh, municipals above the line, Reading represents 20.463% of our load. North Reading represents 18.23% of our load. Linfield represents 6.53% of our load. And Wilmington represents 54.77% of our load. The Massachusetts uh, Municipal Light Plant Voluntary Pilot Payment. So based on a recent study performed on annual town pilot payments from LMLPs on a total and unit cost basis, RMLD pays 452% higher than the average for just the below the line voluntary pilot for Reading and more than 742% higher than the average when you combine the below the line with the above the line town payments as a total pilot. Here's the utilities that responded to the survey. This reading down the bottom is, in, is actually incorrect. Correct. Um, 2.3 million, the 0057 has to do with the um, addition. The below, it should be the below the line and above the line. It should be all payments, so I can make that. The 0057, uh, 0057 is correct but that should be uh, have the above the lines added to it because it represents each town and all, and all payments that they might go to, the, to their towns. So I can correct that slide. Is that a per capita, the unit cost? Yes. Okay. You mean by based on kilo, it's um, Based on kilowatt hours. Kilowatt right. hours sales. Okay. So there should be 2.73 million instead of the 2.4. I'll fix that, though. Uh, the history of the voluntary below-the-line pilot uh, started in 1997 um, at 1 1.5 million and has uh, changed uh, each year with uh, CPI, with an average being 2.35 percent. Uh, if it had been at a flat rate, this is what it would have looked at. So let's see, the difference would have been $844,000 if it had been at a 2.5% flat. The RMLD operation summary, uh, revenues are declining due to reduced energy usage, energy efficiency measures, adjustable frequency drives, batteries, expenses are increasing such as labor, electric system, equipment, et cetera. RMLD operating revenue is quickly con converging with pilot payments, meaning that revenue is coming down, and all the pilot payments are coming up. Plant value is increasing at a fairly steady pace from 2014 to 2024 with all of the work that we have to do in building the new substation and then should level off to bring the system into balance for loading, capacity, safety, code construction, and to achieve a proactive cyclic maintenance plan. Approximately $8 million per year is earmarked long-term for capital outlay. Voluntary below-the-line pilot payments are increasing and represent more than 39% of operating income. Combined with the above the line, the total payments made represents 60.6 percent of operating income paid out to all towns. The convergence of the below the line payment with the current track for reduction in revenue is an issue in which the RMLD must take action to study and strategize going forward. This picture depicts what I just said in words. The next slide, uh, I wish I could make this a little bigger. Hold on, Let's see, um, right there. That's good. So basically, what what we're saying here is, um, let's see, uh, can we get from operations? Six point. So this six point one three eight, and and this is the payment from. FY18 based on a CPI of one point, was it 1.6? Okay. And then the, uh, well, this is part of our proposal, but Wendy's making $500,000 payment to OPEB, or we had earmarked OPEB and pension, and then a capital fund transfer of 3.9. And the point of looking at this is that we have to borrow 
our, we have to dip into operating funds at 1.5 million just for that year. And that continues for the next three or four years um, that we have to dip in. The operating revenue we are setting again at around 12 point something million. And again, that doesn't represent two to three times what we pay in a month. Uh, remember I said we talked about the uh, reserve fuel fund and we talked about the rate stabilization fund and together that meets what the auditor had recommended. So we're right around 12 million, but we had put some extra money in there earmarking towards the new substation and getting a lot of the capital outlay, which everyone has copies of or can look online. Uh, we do it in a six year plan. So we, all, we, we vote on that one year, but you always see it out six years. So this is a cash deficit that's going to be happening over the next three or four years as a minimum. Um, and I, I just think it, uh, several people thought that was important to show. Um, couple more slides. Okay. So here, here's the, this is now what, we've gone back, we've looked at everything at this point. And so now this is what we're willing to put on the table at this point. Uh, we have, first off, we, the issue has come up of giving the town a renting in advance of one of the years from below the line payments to be paid back with a very low interest rate over five years, potentially, on that, subject to discussion and analysis. The other would be we'd have a three-year plan. It'd be a flat 2.5% increase or CPI, whichever number is higher, with a ceiling of 5%. And that would commence in the current year. So the current year's payment would be increased and adjusted to make that at this point in terms of what we are. We'd also propose that there be a 0.5% of the below the line to go to all four towns in terms of being fair to all the, to all the four towns in terms of, of, of uh, the funds here. There also would need to be a formal study. One of the issues that Colleen brings up here, and this is something that now has become apparent in, in analyzing this, is that if the payment, even with the CPI under the present, under the present uh, formula, at some point, we're not going to have enough capital down the road. That's going to happen. And so what we're looking to do is to, is to do this for the three years, have a formal study addressing the, the payments as an integral part of the comprehensive study that evaluates the long-term revenue, the financial plan, and projects of the RMLD. So go to the next slide, Colleen. This is the effect that would have if our proposal that we have here that we're putting on the table today. So there'd be additional amounts to the, uh, the town of Reading in terms of EBNF for 2018. And then you've got the others, and then also what would go on the below the line numbers uh, on that too, the additional to all the four towns. So that's what we're putting on the table at this point. So, and I'll open it for discussion from the members at this point. So the numbers in red are, are additions. Right. Right. So it'd be close to a hundred thousand dollars or so per year uh, for the three years <clears throat> until we can make sure that we're not going into the red, and we have enough capital, and that the things that Colleen has just mentioned in terms of the decrease in our kilowatt hour sales, which by the way, if you go forward in inflation adjust them, have an, a more significant effect, just like if you go back in time and try to adjust forward. Uh, so we're very concerned about that um, and, and certainly not seeing the economic development in our towns to be able to kick that back up. That's what's happened in the past. When that gets kicked up, we have, everybody can kind of ride along with that and everybody's fine, but it's not happening today and all the LEDs and adjustable frequency drives and other things that have gone to energy conservation are having a dramatic effect in terms of our, of our sales. And that translates directly to our bottom line. And we're, I should mention also, we're a relatively fixed cost organization. You know, we have three unions here. Uh, we have economies of scale in terms of being able to buy lots of power. Mm. And we get lower cost. But we also have economies of scope by having four towns involved with a fixed cost department the more you can serve, the less it costs per unit to serve each one of those towns. So it's a wonderful thing that we have. Uh, we just, I think, have to be very careful in terms of how we, we approach trying to help uh, any of our four towns. Okay. Comments from members? 
Well, I think this is a very useful development, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's uh, pretty intriguing to me. Uh, it's interesting to me. Um, okay. I'd actually look at some numbers uh, along the lines of what you suggested, uh, namely a, uh, if we had a formula ret retroactively back uh, around FY99, that had 2.5% 2 2 or CPI, uh, it would have been a very good thing for us. So I, I think retrospectively it was good and I, I see this as a promise. Yep. Yeah, we, ha we have some issues. Uh, in terms of going back um, retroactively, in the 1985 um, legal issue, uh, the, the department recognized that it, the uh, that uh, the RMLD cannot engage in retroactive rate making, which that might fall under the guise of. So it might be an issue to be able to even go back and look at that. <coughs> George, you want to comment? Uh, well, I mean, one of the options that uh, yeah. my concern here is talking about the capital, moving forward with the RMLD. Uh, it's a reliability, uh, and I'm speaking for the town of Wilmington, as far as new customers coming in, we're talking about potential new growth, trying to keep a, a lower rate for some of our customers, uh, increase the KWH for the RMLD, which we're looking for, Great. and uh, as far as the, the rate that the rate payers are paying. Um, so I, I'm really not looking forward to any uh, in increases that we get here or anything that's going to jeopardize the sustainability for the RMLD. Uh, that's my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Has this gone to your full board yet? This has been run by each of the commissioners has been reviewed <coughs> this at the present time. We have, have we taken a formal vote on it? No. Yeah. But it has been run by each of the, each of the commissioners that are sitting here tonight. At this point, Are you so planning to take such a formal vote tonight? Uh, we certainly can, if that's the wish of the. Of it the would subject. be helpful because then it, it becomes an official offer from. Okay, I'm more than happy to do that. You just be aware that any vote we take will be subject to approval by the CAB. Yep. Under the 20-year agreement. I know. I know how it works. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other comments then? All right. Other than that. Do, I, do we stand adjourned then? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have minutes to approve? Oh, you want to do that? Mm -hmm. I read them. I actually have them. Okay. okay. I've, I've read them too. So everyone else, yeah, everyone yep. So if, I, if there's a motion to approve, I'll, I'll move to approve the uh, minutes of the uh, subcommittee minutes of September 27, 2017, either as is or as amended. Okay, second. It's been moved and seconded for the discussion. Uh, a couple of your titles slipped. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, a, I'll clean page it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to uh, okay. restate what I said on page four, third paragraph. Okay. Uh, financial committee should be finance committee. Okay. And my comment on the CPI should read: uh, the CPI has varied from less than one percent to more than four percent over the last seventeen years. Okay. okay. That's all. Very good. As I will accept that as part of the main motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed, that motion carries 5-0. So I have a motion to adjourn. And we'll be meeting uh, one week from tonight? One week from tonight, yes. Um, oh, oh um, no. 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 no? <laughs> um, there's been some issues. People are being able to attend that. Okay. Um, John can't make it. Um, I don't think he was, he was on the phone when we made the plan. Right. So I'm, I'm open to other dates, uh, well, certainly, but that particular I mean, date I cannot do it. Can we, what, I mean, I'd like to meet next week. I don't want to drag next this week thing is on. Fine. I don't want to drag yeah. this thing on. So sure. if Tuesday works, everybody. Tuesday be fine. I'm still good, but I uh, will not have had a chance to take this back to my board, uh, given that we're probably not. Okay, well, tell me, tell me um, what's, what's a good date for you then. I don't want to lose the date. Let's keep the date. Uh, I'll talk to my chair. And we'll okay. But I'd like to move this along next week. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. Tuesday okay. the 20th. Okay. Um, can we, can all members of the Board of Selectmen of Finance Committee, uh, receive a copy of this by email? Is that the 19th? We no, it was the 19th yeah. at 530. Yeah. We had it. 19th. It's since it's being presented uh, in the public, yeah, it's a public document. I okay. can't do the 20th. Okay. <laughs> oh, cannot do the 20th. Okay. John? We might need to move to the 21st then. 
in the 21st. Okay. We have a CAB meeting. You know, I really, whatever date works, yeah, I'd like to do this we'll next week. So let, let's get a date. What's that? We're going to do it before the CAB Wednesday, meeting. a better date next week. Wednesday is better for me, certainly. About Wednesday works. What? Does works Wednesday for, work? Yeah, we have a CAB meeting, so we can meet before that. Let's okay. Before yeah, terrific. Yeah, terrific. So let's, let's do Wednesday. Okay. Again, I don't want to. I don't want to. on the minutes? <laughs> yes, we did. Okay. I don't want to drag this on, so I'd like to get next week a meeting. So. Thank you. Okay. Do I now have a, media, a motion to adjourn? Motion. A second. second. All right. Second. So move to second it. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.